Uh, yes, so hello everyone. Yes, uh, I'm Adam, this is Logan and Mihai. We're all recent graduates in the verification team at Graphcore, all working at Inception Verification. And yeah, we're just going to talk a bit about our experiences, you know, joining as a, as a graduate and yeah, some of the challenges and interesting problems come across the way. I really wasn't expecting one of to be sat in front of me. <laughs> sorry, I should have said sorry. Uh, I'll keep the controversy. <laughs> uh, so a bit of background. Uh, this is our Graphcore IPU. So we're a relatively small, relatively young company. And we make processing machines. Uh, these are sort of very parallel processes for machine learning and AI applications, you know, in sort of large data center. Uh, sort of applications and IPU is intelligence processing unit. So we consider it sort of a different class of processor. And if you see here, let's try the laser. Oh, sorry. No, oh, I'm sorry. Laser. Okay. And so under each of these four heat sinks is a chip. That's an IPU chip. And they're sort of large, sort of reticle size, not quite that big, but pretty chunky chips. And there's a lot of complexity in there that needs to be verified by the hands of Logan. Yeah. Side. So, so yeah, in more in more detail, uh, what we verify and what is cool to verify is that it's a multiple system. So uh, each red spot you can see is like a single core. It's uh, like a CPU, central processing unit. We call also uh, it like a tie. And so there is 1,400 tiles <coughs> in, in the IP. This is the IP. Uh, and each core has a memory attached to it, and it's like the red table you can see. Um, and uh, each core is like a um, uh, a multi multi thread core, so they can run at the same time multi core at the same time multi core program. Um, and um, well, they they can communicate between them uh, along the along the columns or in the exchange there, and then they can also communicate externally to get some data from from uh, the outside world. Um, but uh, as you can see, it's, a, it's what a, a big chip, and we need to verify that. Uh, how do we do it? Uh, so, what I will present to you today, and we will present you today, is three different points of view of what is verification in our own way and why verification is cool. Um, so the idea of this presentation is to give you some insight about what is verification, what do we do every day, uh, and I will I will begin by doing like more about philosophy of verification. I like philosophy, so I will explain a bit the philosophy of verification, uh, and then Adam will talk about how it's easy to do verification with a, a good infrastructure, uh, and me I will explain how we verify specifically the tile, the little red spot you've seen there, because there are one thousand four hundred tiles. So we need to be careful in that. So, so first, um, Connor did a great job by explaining that, but we are really between architecture and RTL. Um, and so the first thing with architecture is we need a full understanding of the architecture and even more than the architect sometimes, we need to challenge the architecture. And also we can give some feedback to our architecture. We are able to, why not give some new ideas to them, uh, something they haven't seen before. And we are able also to, um, well, to have a very good understanding of each of lots of features in the architecture. So it gives you a, a full understanding. At the same time with RTL, you need to understand a bit of hardware design to create innovative and efficient verification patterns. Uh, and at the end, what you need to do is to verify the wall the whole system, the whole IP, which is a big thing, uh, but the state space, because there are lots of states in uh, in states in the CPU, it's quite large, it's very large. So you need to find in this large space, a subset that is optimal for verification. When I say optimal, is that it, uh, it ensures uh, other high reliability. And at the same time, it's not computationally expensive because you don't want to spent uh, 10 years to compute all this, the, the subspace, the state space. So that's the main challenge of verification. And that's why it's very interesting is because, well, you need to 
bring your human intelligence is in the sub subset, and I will explain why. So let's take a very simple example, uh, Adder. Um, and we have the RTL design here. It's the hardware description of the addition, okay? And we have the architecture. They say, oh, I want just an addition. Um, and they explain what is the mathematical model of the addition. And say, well, I want to verify that. I'll say, well, they, I'm lazy. So what I'm going to do is do all the inputs possible. And I will check with the model and that will be easy. But let's take, we, let's take n equal one. So just two inputs there. Uh, we have two power of 64 combinations in same power 19 combination for substitute bits inputs. Uh, you use a uh, AMD Radeon core. It gives you with eight teraflops, which is pretty good. It gives you 10 power of 13 operation per second. So it gives you 10 power of six seconds to compute everything, every input, which is about 1.7 weeks. It's very long. So you can do that. And also you say, well, maybe I have multiple cores. I have multiple AMD Radeon, so I can maybe divide it by three or, or, or something. But let's say you have n equal five, four, or let's say you have um, uh, an environment variable. So the environment is like you're doing an addition, but this addition is done in a CPU. So you have like, I don't know, uh, um, exception, interruption during the addition. So maybe it can affect the addition. So you want to check that. And so it's it really increased the, the state space. So you need to find solution. Um, and so you say, well, you can rely on mathematical properties, like for instance, the, the, uh, the addition is commutative. Well, you can because it's hardware. So what you need to check is that, that, that. So you want to check that when you put something there, it's done correctly the job in the past. Okay, because it's hardware at the end. It's not just mathematical model. So that's why it's very interesting is that you need to find a better way to, to, to check that. And also, when, when you think about the mathi mathematical model, when we do the addition, we, we say, well, we compare all design with the addition done by the CPU, by the IMD radium. So we rely on the IMD core that is doing the verification in some ways. So sometimes, well, for an addition, it's easy because you know the core is, is good. But like, what do we do with very precise protein point units? That's an interesting question. So, well, I won't give any solution there. If you have some ideas, uh, you're very welcome to be a verification engineer and to come in graph core, why not? <laughs> uh, let's say, I, I, Adam, you can explain now more about uh, the general design. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to talk about my experience and I'm going to focus on the, the sort of learning aspect of getting into verification as a grad, especially if you don't have any specific experience. Not to be like myself, I yeah, came from a physical design background and I really enjoyed it. But you know, I wanted a new challenge and uh, yeah, moved into verification. So the yeah, yeah, what looking back at that transition from sort of a non-verification into verification, I found that uh, yeah, it was very softwarey that process. That was quite surprising just how much of a software challenge it is. You know, physical design is very you're looking at the hardware and here it is the hardware but it's a software challenge you know you're writing software you're using high level programming languages you're managing your compute resource and uh yeah specifically in graph call we do use a lot of python c plus plus same as the kind of common same and um, yeah i found that very interesting very good to work with and uh, especially as well we develop a lot of custom infrastructure that we use and that's really good because you can look into the source code in our repository and you can look at it and you can understand what's going on there and you can always you can add features if you want to get involved with that and yeah, i found that a really good process uh yeah sort of looking into that infrastructure side i was going to take a sort of typical soc test bench this is very similar uh very simple uh yeah model here so we split our test generation and our test bench. So here we are generating our stimulus in Python and you'll notice there's a lot of Python and a lot of C++ here. So we're generating our stimulus in Python and we are poking that into our C++ model. And you'll notice that this is almost a standalone sort of section here. And then separately, we will poke that into our design, our system design and into that same 
reference model there but you know, comparing them against each other and yes there's various advantages here in the way that we split our generation and our simulation and i won't go into those i think those have been talked about in other talks but yeah this is sort of a one way of doing it and a various pros and cons but for me i think this is a really good learning environment the way we do it uh, and i will focus on just the test generation side so this is a standalone system so you would generate your transactions you're poking them into your reference model of your architectural spec for your box and yeah you will store these transactions and then at any later date you can use them in your actual simulation and yeah for me because this is self-contained you can you're almost understanding the spec and you're generating the transactions and you're watching them whiz around your model and that's yeah it's a good system that you've got complete visualization of you know this is all code that you write and code that you can see and infrastructure you can see and it's all very visible and I found that very useful for learning uh, and yeah in terms of learning I've got sort of three key points which is from a planning perspective um, yeah because you don't need the design involved it's quite easy to join the project and you're just working on your section you can do your model for your block and you can really get to know it without you know worrying about what the design is doing because that's over there and you know that might not even be ready uh, from that you can even do stuff like you can work on your coverage yeah without the design being ready uh, you've then got a so you've got planning you've got uh, playing what i'm going to call playing so because yeah because this system is self-contained you can play with it and it's all visible and you can see your model and you can see your transactions and you can get yeah you can just you've got your whole system in front of you and it's all there and then you've got prior knowledge so for me before joining GraphCore I didn't know any system Verilog it was all sort of Python C++ that I picked up along the way at school at university previous jobs I think speaking to a few people today I think that's quite a common experience for students but yeah it's not something to be intimidated by if you know Python you can go straight in and you can say oh, I'm going to write a Python program that generates some pin wiggles, you know, some transactions, and that's a standalone task. And that's you, know, you can do that, and then you've, you've done useful work. You know, you're there on day one, you've done useful work. Or, you know, I know some C. Oh, I'm going to make, I've got this spec, this description of an object, and I'm going to make a little model that will emulate that behavior. And yeah, so the upshot of all this is, you know, you can come in as a graduate and without any of the overhead of learning System Verilog or UVM. You can come in and you know within the first week or two you are landing code in the repository that's you know it's doing verification it's doing your stuff and that's yeah that's a really good feeling uh, yeah and i really hope that yeah you'll give verification a go and uh yeah especially if you're from a software background or you know, haven't considered hardware verification i think it is quite accessible um yeah with that i'm coming high switch the microphone yeah, so I want to present you a short um, overview about uh, what we're doing in the core verification with Tiles QC. Uh, basically, the tile needs to execute the program. So this program contains different instructions. We have different types of instructions, like the branch instruction, uh, load and store instruction, or add instruction. <laughs> and <clears throat> the functionality of each individual instruction is uh, specified in the instruction set architecture, which is needed for our test generator. Um, we do, to cover all the interesting cases um, in our test generator, we use randomization, and we do that at different levels. Uh, first, we do the randomization in test generator at the instruction level. We want to see all the operands being used by each individual instruction. We want to see all the meter values being used at the sequence level, where a sequence means a group of instructions, we want to see uh, different instruction orders. For example, we want to see an add instruction file followed by a div or an add instruction followed by a store. And finally, at the program level, we want to see a different configuration of the tile CPU. Uh, we want to use um, some debug features. We want to enable or disable uh, different CSR um, values. 
So we have a Python test generator, which creates a list of instructions. Uh, we save this list of instructions in an assembly file. Uh, after the compilation step, we have a binary file, which is finally loaded into the entire CPU memory. Uh, to verify the tile CPU, we load the same binary file into a reference model. Uh, the reference model is an um, abstract in implementation of the CPU design. Uh, it doesn't contain any uh, modeling of the timing. We don't care too much about um, how long it takes to execute an instruction. We only care about the functionality of the instruction. And during the simulation, we compare the results. Uh, we want to make sure that the same values are written into the memory, the same values are computed into uh, the register of the tile CPU. And if at the end of the test, if the results are the same, if there is no errors in the test path, so uh, our tile CPU is uh, bug free. Uh, why verification is rough work? Uh, first, uh, as a verification engineer, uh, you will be able to see the full chip roadmap Basically, you will see the design from a specification to a real product. If you go to our stand, you will be able to see the chip there on, on the table. So this is pretty cool. Uh, we are, as a verification engineer, we are working really close with other teams in the silicon department. We are working uh, with logical design team, physical design team. So this um, can help you to expand your knowledge in the uh, silicon uh, area. Uh, we use different EDA, EDA tools, which can be quite challenging from time to time, but uh, again, it's a good way to, to improve your knowledge. And also, a verification requires a lot of skills. So, uh, graph query, you'll be able to uh, play with things like databases, regular, regular expression, multi threading programming, and even more things. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, GraphWorks um, has a really strong uh, graph-based program where you can um, improve your technical and social skills. We have a great um, and strong graph-based community where you can join for activities and events. Uh, the majority of the graduates are new into, into the city in, in Bristol, so it's quite a good way to explore the city and to uh, get involved into the company culture. Um, moreover, um, the, the graduates are from different uh, departments in the company, so getting in touch with them, you will see our product from a software point of view or a hardware point of view. So, yeah, I think it, it's great to have um, this opportunity. Um, for more information about early career um, opportunities, um, we have our website where you can uh, find more information or if, if you have any questions, you can send an email to student at graphcore.ai. Um, feel free to explore our YouTube channel. You can find lots of videos about our product or about uh, how is to work at Graphcore uh, as a graduate. So there are some great presentation there. And yes, thank you for listening. And if you have any questions.